What do you say we take a look at making a forged flower today? Welcome back to Black Bear Forge. Now we've looked at all sorts of different forged flowers. The one I have in my hand here was actually made by Matt Jenkins of Cloverdale Forge. And it's one he demonstrated at the Rocky Mountain Smiths Conference a few years ago. But he is not the only one I've seen make these. And I'm not going to exactly copy Matt's design because he was making hooks out of these. But I am going to do my best to copy his flower concept here because I think it'll look really good on that mystery project that we haven't announced yet. To start today, I'm going to use a piece of quarter by two and a half by eight inch flat bar. So that's six millimeters by 65 millimeters by 210 millimeters approximately. And I'm going to start on the porta band and I'm going to cut out a blank here and I'm going to isolate the material for each of the petals using a bandsaw. That's going to give us a piece that will be fairly straightforward to work. So I'm going to go ahead and start an inch from one end. And I'm going to make a, a line here that's a half inch in. I want to stop all my cuts at a half inch. So this piece I will just get rid of and this will scroll up to become the center of the flower. And I'm going to go half inch widths for my petals here. It'd be a bigger flower than the one Matt had made. And I'm going to try and do 12 of these, which means I wish I'd cut my blank just a little longer, perhaps. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And on this end, instead of cutting down to that half inch mark, I'm going to cut it at a bit of an angle, I think. And round it up in here. And that'll give me something to draw out a little bit further for a stem. I go cut it there. Okay. So then all these need to be cut straight down. You can use a hacksaw if you want. Use an angle grinder. Be really fast on a chop saw, but the blades are kind of wide and you're going to lose a little bit more material, but it would work. So that then is my layout here. Ignore this line, I'm not going to use it. And this should make a little bit more sense once we get to forging. So we've got our blank all cut out. I kind of rounded up this corner so it'll draw out a little easier. And I'm not going to draw that out much. I think I'm going to just go ahead and forge weld that onto this really heavily textured piece of bar that I found in one of the scrap buckets. And we're just going to put a handle on that and that'll make life easier in the long run. And that will be the first thing we're going to do. scarf on that. Make 
That should do the trick there. I'm going to upset this just a little bit to give it some more mass at the end. And we'll weld these. more on that scarf right there. The one that's down against the anvil is the one that usually doesn't come together as well right at the beginning. So just kind of anticipate that you'll go back. Francis Whitaker usually got it all in one heat though and he'd be done with this and on to something else. Find the weld square. I'll go to octagon. And finally I'll round it up. The next thing I want to do is draw out this end and that's going to get scrolled up into the middle of the flower. I'm going to let it flare out like that. So that it protrudes a little from the center of the flower. I think I'll just go ahead and scroll that up. That's just going to be the very center of this flower. The next thing we need to do is spread each petal out and then get it out of the way so we can spread the next petal. And that's going to be the hard part. I wish I remember how Matt did that on his. We can either do it flat or we can bend them out of the way one at a time to do it. And I'm not sure which will be the best, so we'll, we'll look at both options. spread these out. There's a risk of hitting that. Let's see if we can turn that down. I think these might be better off done if I bend them out of the way. Ultimately they all have to bend 90 degrees out anyways. This will probably be easier done in the vise, but I'll start right here anyways. So 
think that may be the way to go with this. And then we can start to scroll that around some more. And then we get that out of the way for the next one. and bend a couple of these down. I don't know if that's going to be a mistake or not. You kind of see where the flower petals come from as we go here. Still not sure what the smoothest approach is or if it's just one of those things that's going to be really fiddly to work with. Certainly starting them this way seems to be considerably easier.
Well, certainly bending that on the flat is the way to get space for each of those pedals. So I wish I had done that right from the beginning, probably even before I scrolled that very end because that would have given me something to hook a bending fork over. But in any case, that seems like it's working. Now I just got to bend all these over 90 degrees and then try to scroll it up and hope I haven't gotten it so out of whack that I can't do that. Probably make this look easier if I ever make a second one. And hopefully as I scroll that, that will all line up a little bit better. And right now that's pretty wonky. So sometimes even when you know what you're going for, you still have to work through the process of how do you get there. And perhaps tonight I will go find the conference DVD where Matt demonstrated this and see if I was even close to his technique. Although I do seem to recall that some of the hooks that he demonstrated were pretty fiddly and this may have been one of them. This really wants to twist at this point. That's real problematic. But you can see what we're going for. And I think we're going to get there sooner or later. I think I should have left more tail to scroll up in the middle. This is considerably bigger than the one that he did. Now that it's kind of down in one plane, it's getting much easier to, to work with. But I'm going to open this scroll up just to make it look a little bit better. And I'm going to back bend this so it sits up straight on the stem. There we go. Look at that, that helps close it up a little bit. Having different tool options can sure make your life easier. I'm going to close this up now until it has about the same space right through here. Trying to chase little kinks and funny spots at this point. All in all, for my first go at this kind of a thing, and in a much bigger size than Matt's was, I'm pretty happy with it. Now, 
some of these that are not right where you want them, you might be able to draw out one edge a little bit. Well, that doesn't seem like it's doing much. Let's see if we can pry it over with a chisel. I need to find a glove. That's pretty hot. There we go. It already looks a lot better. At this stage, you might want to take a file or figure out a way to grind and get into all these spaces and make the ends of the petals look more uniform. I think that'll just be your decision. I don't think I'm going to show it on camera at this stage of the game. I think I will curl them forward. This is just a trailer hitch. Let's work around all the pedals. That looks pretty good. We'll take a look at the finished product here in a little bit. Well, here we have our completed flower. I went ahead and did just a little grinding on the end to make sure these are all about the same length. I didn't worry too much about the exact profile. I'm going to let it be a little bit funky and a little bit organic. But after grinding, I brought it back up to heat, gave it a good wire brushing. Put a coat of paste wax on like I usually do, although in the finished project, I might strip all the wax back off and actually paint these. I haven't really decided yet, but you're just going to have to wait to see what that project is. I've got lots more little elements to make, and I don't know how these are all going to relate. I'm not really planning it out. I'm not doing a drawing. This is going to be kind of freeform, and I'll take all these elements and apply them to that project as I feel like they need to go in the day we work on it. You know, holding a flower like this, I feel like I ought to be on Laugh-In doing a poem. A Flower by Henry Gibson. Okay, maybe not. But if you'd like to see Matt Jenkins make this flower that I have as a sample, this was done at a Rocky Mountain Smiths conference several years ago where he was talking about his 366 hooks project, and this was intended to be a hook. But he did show how to make the flower, and there was a DVD done at the conference showing him doing the flower, and that's available from the Rocky Mountain Smiths. I'll see if I can find a link to their DVD site and post it down there. You'll just have to go through and find the right one. I'll see what I can list down here, but look in the video description for a link. I think those videos are something like $10 a piece, and you get about two hours worth of demonstration for that $10 video. But even though this was a little rough starting, and I may not have started with the best idea in mind, if you feel like you're going down the wrong path, change direction a little bit, try something different, see what works, and if you persevere, sooner or later you get results you're happy with, and I am pretty happy with the way this flower came out. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button down there. Feel free to stick around, watch a few of the other videos, share the videos with your friends, if you'd like to provide financial support for the videos here at Black Bear Forge, there are links in the video description for both PayPal and Patreon. Those are merely donations. The content is free. In the meantime, I hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop. But stay safe, wear your safety glasses, and we will see you for the next one.